So just warming up uh, the uh, um, starting up the model, the speaker model. So just like how you would do it for AI, when you use um, AI to do a prediction, you actually need to warm up the AI. So this is um, what I'm doing now. So today I'm going to share um, about uh, TensorFlow.js. So how many of you use um, JavaScript? Okay, almost all of you, as expected. And uh, how many of you know how deep learning works? Okay, good. So not a lot of you, so very good. I prepared the slides um, to give a, a quick background of what is it about. So how many of you have um, tried TensorFlow before? All right. So today I'm going to share with you guys um, a bit uh, of background what uh, deep learning is because TensorFlow is a um, framework that you use um, to carry out deep learning in codes. So let's uh, move on to uh, the subject. So what's the big deal about TensorFlow.js? So one thing um, that is really exciting when I heard about TensorFlow.js is that oh, finally like TensorFlow can be used in JavaScript because the background of, uh, of me um, getting into data science is one year ago, I, um, I was doing a, a JavaScript and Ruby so, um, and I got really interested in data science, so I really want to try out deep learning. So I have to learn a completely new language just to do that, which is Python. So the good news is that uh, all of you guys who was interested in deep learning, you don't need to spend another one month just to learn Python to do deep learning. Now you can do it um, in JavaScript. And also, um, one thing that is um, really exciting is um, that it's even better than doing TensorFlow in Python is that you can do um, machine learning, um, deep learning, uh, in terms of uh, building up the AI, training it, and doing prediction all on the browser. So what this means is that you don't need to send data to somewhere, um, to, a, to a server backend that's running Python, doing prediction for you, and then sending back the prediction to your browser. So you can do all this on the browser. So I think this is very powerful. So if we have time, I will uh, go to a demo that actually show all this, like it's happening all in the browser without even sending data to some backend. So to understand what deep learning is, it's very important to know the basic building block of deep learning. In this case, it's a neuron. So um, any of one of you, um, how many of you have heard about neuron in biology or anything? Okay, so neuron is like uh, the, the, the simplest cell you can find in human brain. So the same thing for deep learning, um, the basic building block is a neuron. So imagine if you, you buy um, a Lego toy, right, um, of a dinosaur, right? So imagine neuron is like a Lego block, a single Lego block of the whole um, dinosaur Lego uh, toy. So in a neuron, you always have three parts. One is the input. So in this case, uh, this diagram shows uh, a neuron that takes three input, but a neuron can take um, any, value, any number of inputs um, as long as it's small, one or more. So in this case, it's, um, for simplicity sake, it's um, in three inputs. So um, imagine uh, uh, autonomous, autonomous uh, driving vehicle, right? Um, in this case, you're taking in the image of the road, right? So in this case, you'll be, say for example, all the pixels that you actually take in from the camera, these are all the inputs. So in this case, uh, it's a very simple neuron. You only take in three inputs. And next, you have something called the parameters. So what parameters do? is um, it represents the knowledge of the AI. So what it has learned from its experience, from its training, is all captured uh, as the digits in the parameters. So it's very important to have a very clear distinction what these two um, concepts are. So input are things that you, things from the environment that you want to get some prediction out of it, so you feed it in, so it's like the, um, the, the image of the road. And parameters is actually the knowledge that was learned by the AI when you were doing the training. So after that, what you get by mixing these two, right, is that you get a certain output. So this output can be, say for example, back to the car example, is like um, to steer left, to steer right, right? And another output, so in this case, it's a very simple neuron. There's only one output. Another output may represent, say for example, how much you want to steer left to, 10 degree, 20 degree, 40 degree, right? So all neurons have these three parts. And in, uh, in this case, right, for, uh, when you want to represent this in terms of codes and in terms of math, the very simple expression is this. What you're, what you're doing is you're doing, say for example, input one times parameter one, right? And then you plus input two, 
times parameter 2 and then you do it all the way for all the inputs and all the parameters and then you get the output over here. So um, a quick example. Okay, so this is not really um, so applicable in real life scenario but imagine you want to train a neuron to actually tell you um, the parameter of a rectangle right, given um, three properties. The length of it, the breadth of it and the brightness of it. So, I mean, common sense tells you that it doesn't matter the brightness of the, the blue color that is there. It shouldn't affect the parameters, right? So a neuron would learn that this is um, irrelevant. A perfect neuron would learn that it's irrelevant. So it will multiply it by zero. And it will times for length, because there's, every rectangle has two length. So it, we will multiply it by two, and then um, the breadth by two as well, and brightness zero, because it doesn't make sense to add it in. And then what it does, um, it will you will come up with the uh, parameter because um, length times 2 plus breadth times 2 and then you get output. So this is the very simple um, crystallization of what neurons is all about. And in terms of deep learning, what you're actually doing is, um, so in this case, if, if, you, if you look at one of the circle, it, rep it represents one neuron. So uh, traditionally, because of computational uh, limitation, people only build like, one one row of these circles because um, because to to do like calculation with many of them you take days or even months to do the calculation so deep learning is in essence right a, like a mesh of all these neurons calculation why it's so powerful is because imagine if you just use one single neuron just like this example what you can do is just very simple multiplication and addition but with a deep network like this you can do even more. Um, you can model even more mathematical um, calculations. Say, for example, x square, polynomial, or even exponential. So, with all this mesh, the more layers you have, the more com complex mathematical uh, calculation you can do. You can model for the AI. So, um, in in terms of the neurons, right? You typically arrange it as layers in the AI model. So. Um, one, I'll go through um, two of these um, examples later on. So one is a dense layer, uh, which is actually like the bread and butter of AI. You, you see this in almost all um, AI models. A second is a convolutional layer. You see this used um, a lot in uh, images. Uh, and also recently, they also use it for um, text as well, uh, natural language. And third is a recurrent layer. So um, this is more used in for, for sequence input, say for example, I am Elvin, right? You have to put in I as an input, M, Elvin. So for sequential thing, you use um, uh, recurrent layer and there's many more. So because of time issue, I'll talk, just talk about dense and convolutional layer, which is, a, which is a really very powerful, uh, especially you want to do um, something with images. So um, the first layer that I'm going to talk about is uh, a dense layer, which is very f uh, similar to the one that uh, I've presented before. So in this case, you, there is two dense layers. So what dense layer really means is you lay up like neurons and then you pass it to the next layer of neurons and then you have an output. So in this case, it's just two layers. But um, in real practical um, applications, you, s you might see uh, typically more than 10 layers or more, right? So next is uh, convolutional layers. This is a bit, for me, I, it took me a day to really understand like, what's going on with convolutional layers. So imagine you're in a dark room, and in the dark room, there's a, there's a, there's a huge canvas of uh, painting in the room, and then you only have a flashlight. Right? So imagine if you want to find out, okay, what, what is this painting in this dark room? What you will do is you, you, sh you switch on your torchlight, right? and then you shine across the canvas, and then you see, oh, this is uh, some trees over here. And then, um, then, and then you see, hey, there's something that looks like durian. And then it's gray. Oh, it's esplanade. So you, you, you sort of predict that this image is actually esplanade. So convolutional layer uses the same concept. What it does is, instead of, um, imagine there's five inputs, instead of putting all these five inputs straight into the neuron, you are actually just using some of this input to analyze what is it about first. So one reason why um, it's, so, um, it's so popular is that it reduces the size of your uh, AI. Imagine the painting is so huge, right? You don't need like a, a huge uh, flashlight just to make sense of what the painting is about. You can just shine the flashlight across the painting and then get information here 
on the top left corner and then slowly and then predict afterwards. So this is why it's so powerful. So in this case, it, um, for the first step, it's just using three inputs. Right? Next step is using um, the next three input and then to get a, sec a second output. And the last one, uh, you know, so this um, is like the final step, you'll get another input. And then this, you'll send those three inputs to another layer to do something else. So this is what, in essence, uh, convolutional layers is all about. So this is very popular in image because you imagine you have an image that has thousands of pixels um, in, in, a, in a practical use, use case. It's, um, it's not practical in terms of the speed to have like a neural, um, an AI model that is so huge to just ingest the, all the pixels together to, to just analyze uh, what is it about. So next, let's, um, you know, Let's let's find out why why is GPU such a big deal in uh, in uh, machine learning or in deep learning. One is uh, because of uh, parallel computation. So imagine if you look at this uh, deep uh, neural network, right? Traditionally, if you if you were to use a CPU, um, is that a laser pointer? No. Okay. Imagine you use a CPU, right? How you do your calculation is that you run through every line step by step, and then you calculate um, input times parameter plus input. You go through line by line to do the calculation. But with GPU, right, to do, to do this calculation, you don't need to wait for this like input 1 times uh, parameters 1. You can just do input 2 times parameters 2 in parallel. So with GPU, right, you can do all this like one shot in one time step rather than to wait for, wait for this line to finish calculation and then you can do next step. You can do everything parallel. So this is why um, GPU is such a big deal. And so what you do is, um, what you can, with GPU, you can do like, one sh one, in one time step, you can do calculation at the first layer, and then second layer, and so on and so forth. So which is why um, deep learning is possible with, uh, strong with the powerful GPU nowadays. So in this case, uh, for images, uh, just like uh, what I mentioned, right, the canvas, right, imagine this uh, cat uh, photo is the canvas. So what the, the, the AI, uh, will do for the uh, com with a convolutional um, network uh, layer is that you have this flashlight. Imagine this um, green cube, uh, green square. You will you will sort of travel across the image to do some calculation, and then the output that you you get right, you will sort of lay out a new pseudo like image. So usually you have uh, red, green, and blue as the input colors, right? But uh, with a layer, you sort of get one, sort of, you only get one, like sort of one output. So say for example, at first is uh, the, 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 the image size is 32 by 32, you will get uh, with an a, a output layer that is 28 by 28 size with only one dimension, right? So this is how it usually works. And then what you do next is, uh, what it does next is, you, if you need more like sort of dimension, because with one dimension, you can only represent, say for example, one kind of attribute. Say for example, in the case of cats, uh, you, you can, this may represent, say for example, how curved are the contours, like how curved the, the contours are. So, and then another layer can represent how, uh, how sort of uh, random is the pixel distribution. So all the different layers uh, encode different information about the picture. So it depends on the application, uh, the, the, the kind of information it encodes may differ. So say for example, you want to find out how, like say for example, you want to identify a zebra from a horse. In this case, the color would play a big role. But if you're trying to find out, say for example, um, say for example, a, a sofa and a sports car, Ferrari sports car, is both of them are red. So what matters is the contour, like the, the, the lines and the edges. So all these um, convolutional layers will sort of learn which are, what are the important information I need to encode and I need to pull out as outputs for the next layer. So this is um, how convolutional uh, layers works. Right, so say for example, if you're trying to uh, sort of um, predict whether an image is a car or not, so what it does is that like the first layer, right, what it will do is you will just find edges. Like say for example, how curved the lines are and uh, how random the, the pixels are. And then the next layer might encode something like, say for example, um, is this uh, something that is circle or is this something that is, you know, uh, straight? 
And then the next layer might encode something like, oh, this is uh, 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 the whale. This is the uh, windscreen. This is a tree. So as you go deeper and deeper, it's like a hierarchical um, kind of uh, uh, analysis. So the very early uh, layer will encode the ages, and then further up the layers, you encode even more high-level features like whales, um, uh, trees, and all. And then you give you a final prediction whether um, how likely you think it is a, it is a car. So this is how um, uh, machine learning uh, really, like is all about for images. All right, so uh, what is TensorFlow? So you, you, you know all these concepts, but what if you want to do it in code? So TensorFlow is uh, the framework by Google. It's open source. Uh, so I think the first few languages, they, uh, Python is the first language that they release, and C++ uh, for TensorFlow. So you can use CPU. If you don't have a CPU on your laptop, you can, you can use the CPU to do um, machine learning, but it's just very slow. Uh, or you can use GPU, which is your graphic card, and or TPU. TPU are uh, tensor processing unit, so it's uh, pro um, it's only available in Google Cloud. So they are they are hardware. There's there's they are graphic cards. They are optimized just for TensorFlow. So you can't run any other deep learning frameworks on the uh, TPUs. So what you can do is um, these three important steps: build, train, and predict with deep learning. So build is like. Uh, is like you know you, you want an animal that run fast so you you sort of uh, this uh, I, I want an animal like a cheetah so this is like building it means like planning how the the AI should should sort of looks and then training is um, training it with um, data to to learn and predicting uh, what is it about all right so uh, this is a demo uh, I think I'm running out of time I'll come back to here later okay I'll just show you a very quick one. Okay, sure. So, anyone wants to volunteer to play this uh, Pac Man game? Anyone? Okay. Cool. Okay, so what this, um, what this does, right, it's uh, you can play Pac Man. Um, by so so usually you use a joystick to play Pac-Man, right? So in this case, you can uh, make the AI learn what you want um, left to be, what you want up to be, what you want left uh, um, right to be, what you want down to be to control the Pac-Man. So uh, so what's your name? Preston. Yeah. So so you can look at the webcam and then you can okay. So now I'm training the AI for this is the left direction. Okay. So what you want like. Like you can you can try something like if you turn your head to the oh, left, okay. then it's left. Yeah. So if I turn left, you'll be left, right? Yeah. So you go closer. Okay. Hold on. Let me click for you. Okay. So now I'm training it for left. Left. You can turn to the left. Okay. Move your head around. Uh, left. Like because it's learning like what is left. Okay. Up. Up. <laughs> okay. You can move around. Move around. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay, move around, up and down. Yes, very good. And down. Okay. Okay, good enough. Okay. So now it's training. So all this is happening uh, on the browser. So you see, you're seeing is uh, the loss means uh, the error it makes. So now you can play the game. Okay, ready? So you have to look at the webcam. Oops. Okay, so you guys have to help him because he can't see the screen. <laughs> so 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 where? <laughs> left, left. Is it going left? Where yeah, yes. next? Left. Okay, left. Left. Down. 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 Right. 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 Down. 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 Left. Oh shit. Up. Up. Left. Right. 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 Left. Let's talk in the corner. Oh, okay, okay. I think I have to get <laughs> Okay. Thanks for the thanks for like yeah. volunteering, Ryson. Yeah, so this is uh Yeah, so uh feel free to have fun with this game. So this is the this is the link. Um Yeah. So I I have it at, at the last slide, so you can take a picture and then have have some fun with your kids uh, on this Pac-Man game. So, 
So um, now I'm going to very briefly, with the time I, I have remaining, uh, explain how, like what is happening behind the scene for the game that, that we just saw. So one is, um, the first stage, as always, is to build the AI. So in this case, um, you have, uh, say for example, the, if the cat were to be playing the game, right? So um, what, you, what you have is, um, the first layer is a, a lot of uh, convolutional layers. So to, to really digest uh, what those uh, features are, and next layer, um, in this case, so in this case, um, it's a bit, uh, it's, it's not that kind of a simple application. What you have, right, is this, these two boxes is the AI. What you have is here, there's already pre-trained. So Google uh, uploaded a, a pre-trained model uh, that is called MobileNet. So typically, if you do train it in your own GPU, the most powerful consumer GPU we have, you need weeks to train this. So what they do is they upload like a trained version. So what... What, what, what they are doing right, is that they get the outputs of this train model, so they chop the, they chop, they chop the model like halfway and then get the sort of outputs uh, like in between and then they feed it to a next model, right? And in this case, it's a dense layer. So what it does is that from the kind of, uh, uh, you know, picture, picture features you, you come up with, uh, you know, you predict whether it's up, down, left or right. So these are the three different colors. So very briefly, uh, like to train the model, what it does is that it fit in, uh, in this case, what I'm doing with Royston, I take a lot of picture, right? So imagine there's N pictures. So what you're doing is you're training all these N pictures through the model so that the neurons inside can make very good prediction whether is it left, uh, left, right, up and down. So what, it, what this is, is about in the high level picture. And when it's going um, prediction, which is when Royston is playing the game, what it's doing is trying to predict what the movement is. So in this case, uh, one of one of the one of the values or of the direction will be the highest. So this is what it thinks it is um, doing. So in this case, um, uh, there's a there's, there's it's just a arc max. That means uh, what what is the maximum among the force, and then you predict maybe left. So we go left. So this is what it's doing. Uh, um, in some in in essence. So uh, I think we have some minutes left. So this is uh, the code to to build the AI. So this is, uh, the in, this is all JavaScript. So what you're doing is you are loading it from the JavaScript library, and then you are loading, so in this case, mobile net equals to load mobile net. So what you're doing is you're loading the pre-trained um, mobile net that's available from uh, Google. So it downloads the, uh, the network in, uh, from uh, Google Cloud. And then, so this is the, the blue part, what you're doing, you're loading it down. And then we have to move on to the green part, which is the customized part that we want to really learn new stuff about. So in this case, it's a sequential um, model. That means there's many layers to it. That's why there's a sequence of layers to it. So the first layer is a dense layer. Second layer is also a dense layer, and then you get the output. So it's actually very simple, but uh, a lot of people uh, like me one year ago find it very daunting. But if you understand the, the concepts behind deep learning, um, putting everything together is actually very simple. And when you train, right, um, what you do is uh, you have to define an optimizer. So a lot of these uh, details I, I didn't um, sh share with you guys today because of time. Uh, so this is actually the trainer that massage the parameters in the models such that it will do uh, the correct prediction. And then uh, batch size is how many image do you want to feed it at one go? And then you feed the model, which is the training part. So, um, so in this case, it's uh, the data set that you actually train, and this is uh, the uh, label. That means what is the correct uh, representation of the, the image? Is it left, right, up, and or down? So you do it, um, and then you can indicate how long you want to train it for. And prediction, this is the code. So very simple. Um, in this case, uh, what it's doing is uh, it captures the image from the webcam, and then it does the uh, mobile net prediction. Uh, which is the pre-trained one, and then it passed the activation. Activation is like the signals to the another one, which is the model that we sort of trained before, and you get a class. All right, so uh, this end, uh, that's the end of my presentation. These are the resources that you can uh, take a look at. These are some of the uh, links of the more popular uh, sites where people get uh, started on in deep learning. So you guys can check it out. Thanks. I think we only have time for one question. So ask one hot question. Yes. So the JavaScript version of TensorFlow is also using GPU? 
Yes, that's right. So you can choose to use CPU or GPU. So um, what it's actually doing behind the scene is it's using a WebGL on the browser to make use of, uh, of, the, uh, of the graphic card. So um, WebGL is usually used for like, rendering um, images on the browser. So, they actually, so Tensor, TensorFlow.js is trying to abuse it to do uh, calculations on it. So that being said, um, it's not like in a per, like it's not running that as well as like if you were to run Python uh, on on the GPU. So it's about twenty percent. Uh, I mean Python um, uh, running TensorFlow on the GPU is about twenty percent faster, but it's still a big win because before that you can't really even do like machine learning uh, in a practical manner on the browser. But now you can. Yeah. Questions after the meetup, appreciate the question. And is your Twitter handle also Oh yeah, yeah. So, so this is my Twitter handle. So that's my favorite food five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>